Hello and welcome to Movies and Tea. You are listening to our After Hours special on the Europa Report. I'm your host, Elwood Jones, and joining me, of course, is my wonderful co-host, Miss Kim Lowe. Hello. Um, as of tonight, we are going to be talking about the Europa Report. This is Kim's pick for this After Hours block of uh, bonus episodes. And this, if you're not obviously familiar with it, this is a 2013 found footage sci-fi movie. Uh, directed by Sebastian Cordero, in which it recounts a fictional story of the first crewed mission to Europa, which is one of the four Galilean moons off Jupiter. And the story being that uh, the something went wrong on the mission and everything was completely classified until now. And what you're watching is really... Uh, an edit of the thousands of hours of footage that they recorded on the mission uh, played back so that it's finally revealed what happened on this mission to Europa and more importantly what happened to the crew uh, that was sent to since this planet. Now Kim, obviously this is your pick. I mean, what is it about this film that uh, made you want to come and discuss it on the show tonight? I think for one, it's one of those movies which... Well, I guess it's one of those things is that found footage movies are really, I guess, rare in sci-fi. They're more used in um, horror, I would say. Yeah. Um, and I felt that was a pretty unique angle of how to use it in this one. Um, the second thing that I really liked about it was that there was this, um, I don't know, I think it's just the movie worked well for me, I think. And a lot of people don't talk about this movie because I feel like it went really under the radar and it was kind of like this really indie thing, even though there are some semi-familiar faces that are probably more popular now than when this movie first came out. So, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to talk about it just for those reasons. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's you're right in saying, obviously, this being something underground or under the radar sort of hit and... I mean, over here in the UK, I mean, this went straight to DVD or streaming. Um, and I can understand why when you look at it, because as I said, it is a very sort of indie sort of sci-fi project. But at the same time, it's sort of a project that's fighting well above its weight. Uh, when you look at this production, it doesn't feel like some budget production. It feels like some real sort of money and time and effort was invested into really putting together a really impressive um looking film um this is also the sort of sci-fi movie that falls in the same sort of categories as things such as like 2001 space odyssey and sunshine where you're having sort of very sort of highbrow sci-fi concepts um and everything's sort of very grounded uh even though i don't know the ending should we it's hard to say with the ending the ending feels like it's from a different film um, to myself, but you were right in saying. I mean, this is a very impressive cast. It's actually, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I guess I'll just. I mean, we'll talk about the ending when we get there. I guess like yeah. nearer to the end, so we can kind of do some spoilers and stuff. But um, I think one of the reasons why I really like this movie was how it ended. As I and then I think that's where we're gonna have a lot, lot to discuss. Because <laughs> I think I really liked it, and you probably. I want to know why you thought it wasn't, why why it didn't quite work as well for you. Yeah, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself there, but um, I mean, let's stop by also looking at the cast here. We've got Daniel Wu, Charlotte O'Copley, um, again doing his human chameleon thing by giving us a completely different performance than we've seen in his previous performances. We've also got Michael Nyquist and Dan Fogler actually doing a very sober and grounded performance here as uh, one of the doctors based on Earth. And I mean, I really like Don Dan uh, Fogler, and normally he does sort of like very sort of Kevin James esque physical sort of high energy comedy so to see him do a very grounded performance here and do it very believably um really sort of added a lot to this film and i mean i was kind of also skeptical i mean as as you said already this is a found footage movie and normally found footage means that you're gonna very rarely if, if ever see what you're supposed to be looking at and it normally sort of descends into a confused mess as soon as the slightest bit of panic hits the cast um so it was kind of nice to see how the film's all sort of edited together and how all the, sort of the camera placements and the footage we see it all kind of makes sense it's all sort of very like perimeter cameras and cameras based on the ship or helmet cameras so while there is obviously those usual sort of pitfalls that we've have we found for the sort of put together and presented um i thought it was really kind of kind of interesting and uh and fun yeah for sure i mean 
I have, you know, I, I had a, I think I watched Europa Report during a time when I was really, like, starting to watch more found footage and really interested in this kind of, like, I don't know, subgenre, I guess you'd call it. And, and I think that, you know, while horror lends well to this, this is kind of more like a sci-fi thriller-esque sort of film, I guess you would categorize it that way, because it wasn't really, like, horror. It's not like, you know, you're getting hunted by something, but... There's like a certain amount of mystery to what's going on to uh, uh, at at this sort of you know that's the, at the at the story that they're telling, and I think that you know not only does the cameras really work in that sense, but it it also like the cameras lend it to the story of you know of you know just like uh, because of the camera equipment sometimes it glitch out and sometimes you'd have these little things that happen. And these little things became signs that would lend to the story itself. And because of that, it seems like, you know, it's like, oh, when something happened on on the camera, whichever angle they were using, they, they were able to make it like every shot had kind of like this uniqueness to it. Like sometimes you'd, you'd take like one of the cameras and I liked, I liked one of the shots specifically was that when they had walked away and they were just filming that section and then there was like, the computer in the background was what the camera was focused on and you were able yeah. to see what was going on while the crew was freaking out on the other end you know and, and, and kind of like the background and that was really interesting because it's like you're watching like a computer from far away and it's like a smaller screen also so you kind of have like you kind of see what's going on but you don't and that's what it is is that you know the big question here was all about finding out because they had you know the mission started because the the i don't know the nasa and whatnot had found like uh heat signatures and uh, on this moon under you know and then they were like under the ice there was a lot of you know all these different you know scientific terms about how pretty much there's kind of like a livable space because there's water under the ice surface and because of the heat signatures they want to go and test whether um whether there's life on this fourth largest moon of Jupiter and because of that you know obviously this is like a super long journey and it took like over three years to plan and then these people were on this uh, these six people this six person crew was also on this Europa one spacecraft for you know I guess it was like almost two years or something I don't remember the exact amount but it took a really long time for them to to get there right and then and then it was kind of like, you know, you, you kind of like see all these things that happen as they're trying to find that life force. And I like the fact that, you know, I, I can't completely buy into the fact that, you know, they're trying, they're like, oh, it's, there's like a lot of, because I think the slogan for this was like, um, was like, uh, I think it was what? Yeah. Fear, so sacrifice, and contact. And then I was like, I, I don't really buy, like, I think the first time there was more tension than fear. Um, it's not like the fear part isn't done too well, but then you really get the other bits because it is a found footage. So you kind of have this really good, um, idea, I guess, of, you know, like how everyone is feeling because you always have these like close up cameras wherever they are. Went into this one actually thinking it was a horror film, uh, which is one of my first mistakes because there isn't a horror film in the slightest. It's, I say it's just a straight up, um, sci-fi movie. And really sort of like a, uh, a commentary on like the human spirit. And this is something that they, they actually mentioned like in the, in the film is the fact that rather than send an unmanned capsule to Europa, they want to send a, uh, a human crew because a human crew would have perseverance and the human spirit would sort of drive the mission on. Um, so the fact that we've got this crew that are going into completely unknown territory because no one... In this, even in this reality, no one has gone past the moon. That's the furthest humankind has has travelled. So this is completely new territory for for this 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 crew. And the fact that they don't know what they're going into, they're just basically driven by this drive to discover and and find new things. And while the, the film does obviously have like these interview segments with the different crew members, where you it's supposed to be like establishing more personality behind them, but I never really got a huge amount of personality from them. And it, and this again is one of the problems I have with the film is the fact that of these characters with a very sort of thinly outlined, it's sort of like, they all, you know more about their roles than you know really about them. There'd be like, mm -hmm. 
you'll get like a little snippet like um yeah. like Chalito's Copley's son's got a, a son back on earth and you see the sort of like the strain of like the time he's obviously away in space and the fact that his home life is still continuing without him um but other sort of characters is sort of like the pilot or it's all like oh i like speed i want to be going faster and i want to be pushing myself when no one else has gone it's all like and that's all the development she gets um and it's kind of a shame really because the film spends so much time like trying to cover all these different sort of elements like how they would how the crew supposed to like survive in space how they deal with like the psychological impact and like muscle waste from being in zero gravity all the time and all these sort of like uh these questions being answered but at the same time it's sacrificing so much in terms of character um which i thought was kind of a shame really I think I I do know how you feel because I think watching it a second time I kind of um, obviously you know I watched this one I think back in like 2014 mm. or something so it was like uh, you know like five years ago so there's been quite a bit of time that's passed and kind of like my appreciation for sci-fi movies obviously I have more experience now and I've watched a bit more than I used to I still think it's a really solid effort and I think that you're really spot on on the characters because. Um, I had just watched uh, Life, and I felt the same way about Life as I felt yeah. about the characters here, where it seemed like they're kind of, like, underdeveloped. But at the same time, like, I think what works here in a certain way is that I think they're meant that, like, they give each of these characters a good introduction to their role on the mission. And the focus is to talk about the mission. And I think maybe a part of it was that the people who are putting this together, especially as you talk about, you know, even... The people back on Earth who are leading this mission, who started this mission, um, like Dr. Unger, played by M. Beth Davis, and like um, you know, Dan Fogler, who played uh, Dr. Sokolov or something, um, like they're they're more characters, which you know they they show that their passion for science overrides. I guess like they believe in that these sacrifices yeah. were worth it for science. You know, I think it kind of co it kind of connects a bit to our last, you know, our previous After Hours movie, Deep Blue Sea, of how far do you sacrifice for the advancement of knowledge, right? And this is, you know, in this sense, the piece that they cut together of all these things, it's kind of the same kind of thing where I think that they kind of made these characters so that we would understand them in their pride of their work that they're doing and their willingness to kind of sacrifice for furthering knowledge and making it worth it to be that far. Oh, certainly. And I think it really comes to, even when things like go south, we never get the inevitable sort of breakdown of, of the crew. Uh, it's almost like they've signed on knowing that, you know, that may, maybe we, none of us are going to come back, but at the same time, we're going to be furthering science. And that is the end goal here. Um, certainly there's a, a sequence where, where one of the crew is sort of like faced with where the crew are basically faced with um isolating one of the one of the other crew members and it's the the fact that this crew member is not sort of like freaking out it's sort of like acceptance of 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 and realization of what the bigger bigger goal is um i thought it was just just really kind of it's something that sort of like dawned on me after afterwards and i think it's sort of wrapped up in like the final sort of sort of uh words of the of the film really where she just basically like says that you know says that what the crew ultimately achieved um so yeah it's it's certainly a, an interesting sort of concept and it brings to mind i mean obviously things such as like gravity and um and uh and perhaps to an extent life which you mentioned already i mean that certainly had its you know the the greater sacrifice um elements to it of and we're obviously that's dealing with a, a a rogue biological agent here we've obviously got the um the idea of just like constantly pushing ahead to so the fact that so much time and effort and resources have been sort of put into this one push um, it's not like they've got a second team they can send up. It's just all relies on this one team, just like going to Europa and getting the getting the research done. Um, for myself, I mean, 
Wilder certainly when these moments go south in in the space sort of sequences are great. It's just when we get to, we actually land on Europa and things again go south there that it all sort of fell apart for myself. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that there's so many incidents we're relying on characters being characters telling us what happened rather than us seeing what happened. Um, the fact that we've got outside cameras yet they can never seem to capture someone falling through the ice, for example, and and the ins the in helmet hub camera is so close that you're basically looking at someone's eyeball and going and being played off this small amount of space and it kind of made me wish that they'd gone for a similar sort of uh angle that we saw in like sunshine where it's just like a full face uh shot rather than just like this side on shot which is like i'm watching someone pull faces I'm, i can't really get much of a read out here it's it was it was frustrating. It's sort of like we have people just randomly disappear, and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, they they fell for the ice. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, but that's the, that's the thing is that like, the the key to this is that like what I thought was very it was it's very indie I think, but it's also like in the little details of things, right? Is that you sometimes like say like the person fell through the ice or or whatever. As you're watching that camera, you just see that it's just that little speck in their pupils of what they're looking at. Obviously, you know, that's kind of like, you know, very minuscule and it's kind of really pulls you out of the experience unless you're like me and like sitting in front of a computer watching a movie and you can like, it's like the movie's in your face. Um, but like the effort was there to kind of make it a little bit unique and really try to like, you know, use those cameras and use the the you know reflections and all those different surfaces to kind of keep the mystery of what they're seeing i guess because obviously you know just like any creature feature there is kind of like that concept that you know or even in horror films i think um i think one of the things that um the the that i always remember is you know when i was uh, watching an interview of um like it was a Q and A session with the director of Absentia, is that he always says that because he had such low budget um, to create, um, you know, the creature and the in, like because it was so let's such a low budget for Absentia to make that the by the way that he designed his uh, you know how he revealed his his characters and you know the villains and stuff we were able like the audience was able to create a yeah better creature than he would have ever been able to do and i think that that's one of the key things in europa is that you know as we get to the end we're definitely going to talk about you know the ending but there is like kind of like that idea that that's what i like about it i know that you know because the characters weren't that developed it's kind of also like you know we don't really care too much that they're gone it's not really like, oh, you know, I'm really worried. I'm really rooting for this character to make it out, you know, and then they don't. Um, and then you feel really bad because you're, you've connected with this character, but we don't have that sort of connection also. So when they kind of like fall through the ice or something, I think the only thing that we get out of that is the fact that every time someone falls through ice or something that happens with ice, because obviously they're an ice planet, that, um, that you know it's some it's an extra information by what they're saying and by just kind of like they're trying to get you to kind of picture what's going on because most of the time we're only hearing about all these oh luminescent and iridescent and and uh and then you see these like pulsing flashes and in, in behind the ice and you see these things under under the water and you always get these like slight idea of what's going on right but I think that maybe the fact was that the mystery went for a little bit too long. <laughs> because the fact is, you know, I can see, like, I know that there's a lot of people who aren't a huge fan, who who aren't a big fan of this movie. And I feel like it deserves kind of a reevaluation because it's not kind of like a bad movie. Um, there are a lot of really strong points and a lot of unique takes on how they approach to do it. But I also get, you know, what people are struggling with to you know struggling to get past you know like characters and you know certain elements like you're talking about you know like the cameras being too close yeah, or I've, that sort of I thing think my main uh it's, it's it's i'm trying to place where my issue lies here um i think certainly the fact that it's hard to care about any of these sort of characters i mean obviously there's people like 
uh, like Michael Ny- Nyquist and uh, Shelley Do Copley, whose characters sort of stand out more. And I think it I think that's where it's sort of like the characters I cared about, the ones who sort of stood out. Um, whereas when I obviously think when I think of like um, Carolina mm-hmm. Wager's character or MF David's character and it's, it feel bad just like naming all the f- the only female characters in this film and saying that they're the problem here because it's not like that i mean certainly daniel Wu, who's obviously a very established actor had his issues and i i think certainly his okay i'm just gonna say spoiler up here but um his demise i found particularly stupid <laughs> i i wouldn't say it's i think that you know if you think about each of these characters they each you know Everyone who met their end met it through yeah, some but... sort of sacrifice for the team. And that was, and I think that was a main focus of this was, you know, they really wanted to get in your face about like everybody was sacrificing. And he kind of like, you know, his, his death was kind of like, I actually thought his death was kind of clever because, you know, you didn't really expect him to be like on the top and then he'd just fall down, right? Where it's kind of like, sacrifices come in all sorts it doesn't have to be you know everybody that you know had those issues you know they met their demise mostly outside of the spacecraft so you know in that sense you know it, it kind of gives that even people who are in the inside they're not really you know working with you know the actual specimens because there is no reason for him to go out he was just like the pilot. Yeah, he also <laughs> so. hasn't got quite grasped the concept of how a seatbelt works, um, and that if your career controls the ground a few thousand miles per hour, perhaps not the best time to be like trying to do something else. Yeah, no, but the thing was that he was trying to release. I don't understand how spacecraft work. Okay, I'll, let's just put that out there. <laughs> but apparently, when you put down some water shielding. That was supposed to, like, soften their crash back onto the ground, uh, right? It, it was stupid. So that was the reasoning behind it. So if you were able to buy that that side of the story, with my lack of with my lack of knowledge of spacecraft, I bought it. <laughs> I, I accepted it as what it was. And then, well, obviously the only reason he was able to do it, because he had to reach super high up for it, was he had to get out of his seatbelt to do it, yeah. right? In the last few seconds. And that was why he reached his demise. The, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there was another way. Like, he probably... They probably could have made it that he made it out of that, but then there would be no way for him to, you know... He, I don't know. he ends up getting <laughs> the same demise as the guy who bounces off the propeller in Titanic. It, it's co- pure comedicness <laughs> of how it looks. Um, really sort of tracks away from any heroic. My, my only... Well, my, my only issue with his death was that no one actually... Like, even, like, Rosa, who was, like sitting up in, like, you know, the hub with him, didn't think about going down and checking him first, <laughs> you know? You, you know, the pilot d- isn't there anymore. <laughs> you might want to check what happened to him because you're the one that knew what happened, right? <laughs> so, either way, I mean, I, I you know, maybe it's because I have a bit of bias. I really do like Daniel Wu, and I think that, you know, maybe, like, you know, I, I, I was okay with, like, the all everything that happened with that part so it was okay i mean should we, should we do you want to get into the ending since we're obviously getting into sort of spoiler territory here i mean yeah we've already started spoiling so. alert doing the spoiler alert so it might as well okay. keep going and this time we will will i guess we'll start what do you want to start with we're not gonna are do you have anything other to spoil other than like uh, the, ending? Other than the ending i think the ending is probably the end the film is i'm being sold on this 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 concept of what this film is going to be and i'm all happy happy with that and yeah so i mean as i said we get this uh the whole sort of concept is like sort of like fine and then we finally get sort of the the proof of life this thing that we've been sort of chasing all along and um we get some horrific octopus looking thing and it's all like that is an end note i wanted I mean, at least with the abyss you got something that that even if it did look like casper the friendly ghost at least it felt like something you would have some sort of uh, contact with, not something you've just gone like thousands and thousands of miles to become some intergalactic octopus snack. Um, it was it's kind of horrific that final shot. It, rather than thinking, oh wow, they 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 were right all along. They found and made contact, but just in the worst way possible. 
know. I feel it. I feel a different way about this because the reason why I really liked Europa was because of the way it ended. I think I said that before, and and it was because of that final shot and the fact that you know, I mean. I thought it was really powerful because the whole time you didn't really know what creature was following you. It didn't really matter what the creature looked like, but it kind of like, because it was like, because of the shape it was and whatnot, it felt like the reveal was more powerful for an ending than it was supposed to be. Because, you know, to be fair, I, I don't know if they would have, you know, been able to make it out of that, but... Like, in the end, I think, you know, there are various factors to it. Is that, you know, there was a discovery here that was made, obviously. And it kind of, like, answers all the questions that they made the entire time to be there. So, I don't know. I mean, I thought I thought the shot was pretty powerful. Like, in the sense that the creature itself... Um, the creature itself was, like... It kind of, like, answered all the questions as to why it had all these abilities that we were seeing and why they were affecting all those things. And yet we didn't really know still a lot about them. We only knew that, you know, when they were around, there was like this radiation thing. They're kind of triggered by the light around them. And you hear, you have all these little pieces that kind of piece through, like that kind of like put together what this creature is. And then we finally get that image of it. Yeah. Um... Yeah. It's just a different, op- I think, you know, in the end it's, 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 I think that this movie is really split in the fact that it really depends on how, you know, how you view, um, like, your acceptance of what type of creatures work. And which, type, I guess in this case it would be, like, an alien or an, or an intergalactic creature or something like that. Organism. I don't know what you'd call it. So, I think that's that's the main thing. I mean, I don't want to seem to sound like, come off, but I was being too negative on it because I didn't speak enjoy it for the, the for the for the most part um i thought it was a, an interesting concept and certainly an interesting use of the style um it, it's kind of refreshing when you see fan footage done for something other than horror um i think that's that's always a nice a nice surprise um and and done effectively still it's even rarer still especially in these sort of days but um, yeah, I mean, it's a, for myself, it's sort of a one, one and done kind of movie. Um, but the story itself, I mean, it, it, it was enough there to keep me interested to the end. And it certainly didn't, didn't go on longer than it had to, which is also welcome as well. No, I mean, to be fair, I, I really put this out here really because, um, because of the reasons that you say right okay. now, right? I, I, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was because found footage is very rarely seen in sci-fi. So I thought it was one that was worth looking at, and plus it was—it's kind of like you know more under the radar. So I—I I thought you know it'd be nice to discuss with someone other than you know watching this stuff and you know I post it up and no one's ever seen it ever. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I mean, there there are issues with this, and as with found footage, there's always these you know um, these uh, issues of how it's executed also. But I I feel you know mostly this this movie works. Uh, with the story and with, you know, the ideas they're trying to use and the themes that they're trying to do. Um, I even think, like, um, the background music and kind of, like, the sound usage is really good for the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there there are definitely issues with it. You know, I had, I had you know, especially in the second viewing, I think because I had more, like, I had a, I remembered a bit of the movie. So, I... You know, obviously, it kind of, like, became a little bit more obvious that, you know, the characters were less, were kind of underdeveloped and that sort of stuff. Um, there are definitely issues with it. And and I definitely see now, as I watch it again, where, you know, maybe some people struggle to like this movie. You know, and have issues okay. with them. Um, for the viewing, I mean, what do you sort of pair this with? It's a bit of a... It's a bit of an unusual movie to uh, sort of batch up with anything that's sort of off the top of my head, but um, yeah, I mean, it was anything that sort of. Well, I mean, like I mentioned before, um, life would be one that I definitely pair with this, just for um, the story yeah. similarities, also, where they're kind of still also looking for life and trying to see if you know they are alone in the universe, which is you know a very key line that was in this in this story, yeah. also. 
Um, I'd say, like, if you want to be a little bit stretching it out, but also having some sort of sci-fi thriller-esque horror, I'd say Event Horizon would be one to check out also. Um, it's a different type of, you know, uh, similarity, obviously, but, you know, they're still not quite alone, yeah. right? Um, it still brings up that kind of idea to it, and, you know, uh, obviously, if you, if you have seen Her- Event Horizon... You can always uh, check out and haven't listened to our episode. You can go back to our Paul W S Anderson episode of that. Uh, we did a podcast review discussion of it um, in the previous season, which which was a really fun one because that's you know a movie that we yeah, both like definitely. and you know the the spark of how this movies and tea project started in the first place. Um, and I would even say just for, like, a pure sci-fi thing and, like, the danger of kind of, like, survival, um, I would say maybe The Martian would be a good one or, like, Gravity. Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely The Martian, definitely Gravity. I mean, they both got that sort of grounded sci-fi approach. Um, I would think those are definitely uh, two definitely really strong ones and especially i mean obviously event horizon is fantastic and you as you said you can go back and listen to our episode back in season one uh where we obviously talked about event horizon and enjoy geeking out over that one much like mortal Kombat. so um i mean for myself the on a similar tone to obviously like uh to the martian um would be moon um Again, it's it's a very sort of sort of grounded tone, even though it does go off in a perhaps slightly more fantastical angle towards the end. But I think it's uh, it, if you like this film, then I think you get a kick out of uh, kick out of that one as well. There is also another found footage uh, sci-fi movie uh, called Apollo Eighteen, um, which I've heard is pretty awful. But you know, you might want to check it out. <laughs> It sounds something like Asylum would make, is it? Uh, let me see. Apollo 17 was the last US-sponsored lunar voyage, or was it? Hours of found footage classified for decades point to subsequent, subsequent moon mission Apollo 18 that ended very badly. So there's the ending given away. Um, and... Um, yeah, basically you have three astronauts who are on a mission to install radar scans, discover a Soviet space capsule nearby. They also discover a dead cosmonaut and unfortunately for them, learn how he died. Um, so yeah, it's aliens. So, <laughs> spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, if you if you want uh, another found footage space movie, then Apollo 18 is the one that sort of stands out for myself. Um, there is also, if you want sort of like more aquatic but similar sort of setup i mean there's also spear and there's also one of my favorite movies of all time the abyss which deals with humankind contact coming into contact with underwater extraterrestrial uh, life forms and having much more of a different sort of encounter than we get here but i really love the abyss and i think it's awesome so any excuse to recommend it so <laughs> but um Yes, I mean, this obviously brings us to the end of another edition of After Hours. Uh, we hope you've obviously been enjoying this and obviously enjoyed our two subsequent seasons on Padre Sanson and Guillermo del Toro. Uh, don't forget, as always, you can go and check out our full archive, uh, which is can be found at moviesandtpodcast.wordpress.com. Um, and where you listen to us on Podomatic or iTunes or Spotify, wherever you happen to be listening to us, please do hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave us a review. It all helps raise the profile of the show and uh, helps us get a little more noticed out there in the swarm of podcasts that are out there because we're now in these times where every man and his dog has to have a podcast. And, you know, it helps us, uh, helps us uh, get the show a little more profile out there. But as well as that, you can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, as well as Instagram as well. So, um, all plenty of ways to keep up to track with what was happening on the show. Um, but obviously, thank you to Kim for picking tonight's night selection. And I mean, to we reveal now what we're looking at for the next one? 
Absolutely. The next one is your choice. So um, I don't know. Maybe you should okay. talk about it, or do you want me to talk That's about okay. it? That's <laughs> um, okay. Yes. Um, obviously, as Kim said, it is going to be my choice, and we're going to be having a box set binge as we look at Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, this is a series produced by David Fincher and originally started off as a remake of the classic um, animation animated film based on the equally classic gra adult graphic novel series Heavy Metal. Um, and since this was picked up by Netflix, it's a collection of short films based around love, death and robots with a sci-fi Black Mirror-esque slant to it. So we're going to be diving into that and... Uh, yeah, it's gonna be our it's gonna be our first uh, series to that we're gonna be looking at. So it's gonna be interesting. I don't really know how we're gonna approach it yet, but <laughs> we'll we'll mm. make it work. I'm excited to see what you make of this because I mean this is a series I've been just in like three days. So it be my my house was a wreck, but <laughs> I got to see some really cool stuff. So I'm very excited to see what you uh, make of this one, Kim. So. Yeah, I'm excited cool. to watch it. But until next time, thank you as always for listening. We'll be back next time with Love, Death, and Robots. Good night.